Okay, this is question 7 from November 2018. The following reaction between ammonia and oxygen takes place in a closed system at constant temperature and pressure. 4 ammonia plus 5 oxygen goes to 4 nitrogen monoxide and 6 water. State Avogadro's law in words. Okay, here's Avogadro's law. One mole of any gas occupies the same volume at the same temperature and pressure. Now, I want to tell you, this is like a hot tip. If they told you to state Avogadro's law, you can probably use Avogadro's law to solve the next question. It doesn't always work, but quite often if they ask you to state a law, the next sub-question on from that is related to it, and you can probably use it. So, you can see here, this next question is four marks, but it looks a little bit complicated, so you'd be like, why is there only four marks? And it's because you can use Avogadro's law. Okay, so it says to you, if 6 cubic decimeters of ammonia and 9 cubic decimeters of oxygen are used, calculate the total volume of the gases at the end of the reaction. So now in this reaction, if we had the molar ratio of gases, all of the ammonia would disappear, all of the oxygen would disappear, and at the end of the reaction, we would only be left with nitrogen monoxide and water as a gas, okay? But... If you have a look here, 6 cubic decimeters and 9 cubic decimeters, and this ratio is supposed to be 4 is to 5. So it's very, this does not look like it's going to be in the correct ratio to run the uh, reaction to completion. So one of these is going to be limiting. So then in that case, there will be some reactant left over plus all the gases that you make. Okay, so... What you have to do here is you have to figure out from here what's limiting. So that is going to be my first step, okay? Between this ammonia and the oxygen, what is limiting? And if we find out what is limiting, we can find out what will be left over of the one gas so that we can, when we find the volume at the end of the reaction, we can add the volume of the products plus the whatever's in excess of the reactants. So let's first go here and work out here. So we're going to use the molar ratios because Avogadro's law lets you use the mole ratios very nicely. Okay, so the mole ratio of ammonia to oxygen. Okay, I'm writing this because I'm very irritated that of putting in the subscripts. So the mole ratio of ammonia to oxygen is 4... is to 5 okay so if we have a look here if we have 6 ammonia it is going to be 6 is related to what okay so this is where I've said to you before you need to figure out how you are going to do your um, stoichiometric mixes so on this one I think it's going to be 30 divided by 4, okay? That's going to fall into the oxygen there. Okay, if you can't figure out how I did that, you need to, um, oh, let me make this 30. It's 5 times 6. That's where I got the 30 from. Okay, divided by 4. So that's giving me 7.5 moles, okay? If you don't know how to work out the ratios, you need to stop the video, go figure out in your own head how to uh, work out these ratios, and then come back. Yeah? Okay, so from this, we've put in 6 moles of ammonia and 9 moles. 9 moles, what am I talking about? But it may as well be moles because um, of Avogadro's law. We've put in 6 cubic decimeters of ammonia and 9 cubic decimeters of oxygen. And we've just worked out that if we had 6 cubic decimeters of ammonia, we would need 7.5 cubic decimeters of oxygen. So this means that ammonia is limiting. Okay? So the ammonia is limiting. And there is how much oxygen in excess? There's going to be the 9 that we put in minus the 7.5 that we used up in the reaction. Okay? There's going to be one and a half cubic decimeters of oxygen in excess. Now remember, this is going to stay there until the end of the reaction, this excess um, oxygen. 
is going to remain in the reaction container. So now that we've worked out the limiting reagents, okay, we need to use the molar ratio for everything, for the products. So we need to find out, because we want to find out how much gas we've got left, or how much gas we're going to produce, okay? So we need to do it from based on the ammonia concentration. So we're going to go, oh, NH3, this is so frustrating without the subscript, to oxygen, to nitrogen monoxide, to water. Okay, now make sure you write them properly. Don't be doing these lame, little, stupid, not correct chemical formulas. I don't like it. Okay, so from the balanced equation, 4 is to 5 is to 4 is to 6. So if we have 6 ammonia, okay, we are then going to end up with, we saw this one from the previous example, 7.5 here and here. 4 is to 4 is the same as 1 is to 1, so this is going to be 6 as well. And this is going to be what? 1.5 times this is going to be 8. Okay, well, how would I work this out? It's going to be, is it 8? Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be 6. Now you see, now I'm having a ratio issue of my own. Hopefully we're going to work it out. It's going to be 6 times 6 divided by 4. Okay, which is going to equal calculators 9 that's better because it's one and a half times six which is nine okay that makes more sense my mental arithmetic was failing me good thing I've got the calculator all right so this is now the mole ratio at the end okay because the ammonia was limiting so it governed how much nitrogen monoxide and water we got so at the end of the reaction okay we have all of our products. It's going to be six, six nitrogen monoxide, okay, plus nine water, plus the excess oxygen, and the excess oxygen is 1.5. Okay, let me put this excess oxygen in brackets. So 9 and 6 is 15 and 1 and a half, I think, yeah, it should be 16, no, 1 and a half, 9 and 6 is 15, 16 and a half cubic decimeters. If you really wanted to, you could probably go and work out the moles of everything using the um, N equals V over VM and go backwards, but it's just a lot of extra work when you can just simply use the ratios to solve it. So your final answer here should be 16 and a half cubic decimeters. Okay. The end of the above, the reaction above is the first step in the manufacturing of an acid. This acid contains 1.59% hydrogen, 22.2% nitrogen, and 76.2% oxygen. Determine the empirical formula of the acid. Now, I've told you before to learn acids. Okay, so if I told you you had H, N, and O in an acid, what would your brain tell you? Hopefully your brain would tell you it was nitric acid. And nitric acid is HNO3. So hopefully your empirical formula is going to come out with HNO3. Okay, so if it doesn't, you need to go check your calculations because your instincts should be warning you of something. The other thing I want to tell you is that this reaction plus this reaction that they're talking about here is in actual fact something you have to learn all of next year. So you will be delighted to do that, I'm sure. You have to like learn the reactants and the products and the reaction conditions and everything. Okay, so what is the first thing we do when we back calculate our empirical formula? We can make a table with our elements. So I've got hydrogen, nitrogen, and oxygen. We're going to assume an 100 gram sample 
Okay, so we're going to have 1,59 grams of hydrogen, 22,2 grams of nitrogen, and 76,2 grams of oxygen. So now we need to find the moles, okay? And that's equal to little m over big M. So this one is going to be 1,59 over 1, which is going to be 1,59. This is 22,2 over nitrogen is 14. And where's your calculator? This should give you 1,59. And the oxygen should be 76,2 divided by oxygen 16, which is going to give you 2, no, it's going to give you 4,76 like that. Okay. Now we must divide by the smallest number. So this is going to be 1,59 divided by 1,59 because you can see that's the smallest number. Okay. And then this is going to be 1,59 divided by 1,59. That's going to give you 1 again. And then we've got 1,5, ooh, 4,76 divided by 1,59, which is going to give you 2,99, which is basically 3. Okay, are we finished? No, we are not finished, genius. What are we going to say? We are going to say empirical formula equals H, and there's one H, and there's one N, and there are three oxygens. And if we don't do this, we lose the last mark, and your teacher gets extremely irritated with you. So there we go, there is the empirical formula and it is indeed nitric acid which your in instincts should have told you in the beginning.